Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you have watched the previous video in which I explained what group technology and its advantages are. Furthermore, I ended the video with a note that the most advanced form of group technology is flexible manufacturing system or for short FMS. So an FMS usually consists of automated workstations grouped in a form of a machine cell incorporating fully automated material handling as well. Furthermore, a single supervisory control system is responsible for controlling the whole operation of the FMS along with distributed controllers. Distributed controllers are dedicated controllers for certain portions of the flexible manufacturing system, whereas the supervisory controller will coordinate and control all distributed controllers from a top level. Out of many advantages of an FMS, one is its ability to manufacture variety of parts. However, this variety has limits. That is why it is technically referred to as soft variety. Therefore, to manufacture variety of parts, an FMS is capable of identifying the incoming raw material or parts and depending on this input, change its operational instructions and or sequence. This change is possible because of the ability of an FMS to change its physical setup if the need arise. Physical setup here means the tools, fixtures, routes, etc. Flexibility is not just about being able to produce soft variety or hard variety of parts, but it has certain other conditions as well. In a flexible manual system, humans are there to fulfill the requirements of being flexible. Whereas for automated system to be flexible, the machines should fulfill the conditions required for being flexible. To qualify as being flexible, a system must pass four tests. The first test is of part variety test, which is what we have discussed till now for FMS, that it is capable of producing soft variety of parts. The second test is called schedule change test that checks if the system can readily accept changes in production schedule, that is changes in part mix and or production quantities. The third test is called error recovery test. This test examines if the system can recover gracefully from equipment malfunction and breakdowns so that production is not completely disrupted. And the last test is called the new part test that checks whether new part designs can be introduced into the existing part mix with relative ease if their feature qualifies them as being members of the part family for which the system was designed. Also, can design changes be made in existing parts without undue challenge to the system? If answer to all these questions is yes, then the system qualifies as being flexible. So dear learners, a flexible manufacturing system has to qualify four tests before it can be regarded as a flexible system. However, it is not always the condition that multiple machines are grouped in a machine cell to form an FMS. Basically, there are three different forms in which flexible manufacturing can be achieved. The first and the simplest one is when there is only a single machine in a machine cell. The schematic shown over here depicts this situation. You can see that there are arrangements for automatic part handling and transportation, and the only machine tool present is capable of changing tools to perform different kinds of operations on the work unit. Therefore, this single machine cell may be regarded as being flexible single machine cell if it fulfills the required conditions of being flexible. A bit advanced form of a flexible single machine cell is the one that comprises of two or three workstations working completely automatically and in synchronization with each other to produce variety of parts. This kind of arrangement is called flexible manufacturing cell. Normally, each workstation in this cell is unique in its operation and the part generally has to visit at least two of the workstations to get completed. The obvious expansion of a flexible manufacturing cell is into a true flexible manufacturing system that comprises of four or more workstations. As the number of workstations increases, the inclusion of non-processing workstation also becomes a possibility. These non-processing workstations does not perform any kind of processing but are responsible for other kind of supporting tasks, for example, washing or inspections, etc. 
Furthermore, the larger the number of workstations are involved, the complex the control system will become and possibility of errors and issues will increase as well. Therefore, a distributed control system is implemented for different portions of the FMS, which is not only capable of controlling the workstations or some other portion of the FMS, but is also equipped with diagnostic and tool monitoring abilities so that the effective response to a possible breakdown or error can be planned. Dear learners, you should keep in mind the cost and efforts associated with implementing a flexible manufacturing system. Therefore, as I have said in some earlier lecture, automation is not always the solution. Same stands true over here as well. I would like to share what an FMS is doing in Watt Aerospace in Dallas, Texas. The FMS installed at Watt Aerospace is used to machine approximately 600 different aircraft components. It consists of eight CNC horizontal machine centers plus few inspection stations. Part handling is done by a fully automated guided vehicle system using four vehicles only. The loading and unloading is done at two stations only through storage carousels in which parts are stored in pallets so that AGVs can easily transfer the parts from any location to the desired location. Furthermore, the system is also capable of producing single one-of-a-kind part in continuous mode instead of producing multiple parts in batch mode. So, any part out of 600 parts can be exclusively made in continuous high-speed mode as well. Dear learners, with this example, I would like to end this lecture and hope that you have a clear understanding what a flexible manufacturing system is and what are its capabilities. Thank you and take care.